In the last lecture, we saw how some processes that are not random may appear random to an observer. Some authors have taken advantage of this phenomenon to produce fake randomness, or what is officially known as pseudo-randomness. Pseudo-random number generators have applications to many areas, from simulation to game playing, cryptography, statistical sampling, optimization methods and algorithms, and even machine learning. One first documented pseudo-random generator, or PRNG for short, is that of John von Neumann, the famous mathematician that made contributions to many areas of science, including quantum mechanics and cellular automata. This piece of code reproduces his famous PRNG. The method illustrated by this program, known as the middle square method, is a generalization of the first computer-based pseudo-random number generator, based on a simple arithmetic formula. John von Neumann suggested it in 1946 for the purpose of devising, together with Stan Ulem, another very famous mathematician, what would later become known as the Monte Carlo method for the simulation of physical processes, motivated by their work at Los Alamos National Laboratory while building the atomic bomb. Iterating von Neumann's procedure, produces a series of numbers generated by a deterministic process intended merely to imitate a random sequence. The procedure is very simple. First, you take any n-digit number. Then you square it. Then take the middle n digits of the resulting number as a random number. Use that number as a seed for the ne next iteration. Eventually, the whole sequence repeats in the same order and eventually a number comes up that was squared before. Another flaw is when the sequence reaches 0, 0, 0 and so on, from which all squares from the then on are just 0, and the resulting sequences after padding are also 0. In other words, the method eventually reaches a fixed point. One way to avoid this is to path with 1s rather than zeros, as was done in this computer program. Each iteration starts from a random seed and produces a sequence of sequences of numbers generating the grid shown. The irregularity of the grid shows that the procedure succeeds in producing a random looking output in spite of the simplicity and deterministic nature of the procedure. There are many different methods for generating random bits and test their quality. Clearly, when generating randomness, one does not want to enforce only Borel normality and allow cases such as the Champernon or copland erdos constants. These methods may vary as to how unpredictable or statistically random they look and how quickly they work. Nowadays, the kind of arithmetic PRNGs, as the one suggested by von Neumann, also called congruential PRNG, fail on their basic statistical tests, and better PRNGs have been developed. In version Mathematica 4 and older, for example, the central column of elementary cellular automaton with rule 30 was used as serial random number generator. And since Mathematica 6, a new default RNG based on another cellular automaton is used. Here is a pie chart similar to the ones before, showing how the central column of the cellular automaton rule 30 produces about the same number of ones and zeros, which would be a first basic property for a good pseudo-random number generator, in this case a pseudo-random bit generator. Modern versions of the Wolfram language allow the user to choose between six different PRNGs called Congruential, Extended CA, Legacy, Mersenne Twister, MKL, and Rule 30 CA, among eight other RNGs methods for MKL alone. The full tutorial is online, and here are some examples. You can see that all sequences, all these sequences generated with different uh, methods look random. Here is a small computer program that allows you to visualize and even test some of these PRNGs, 
with some simple statistical tests, where we can see that the so-called congruential PRNGs, such as the one proposed by von Neumann, fails some of them. And how some modern, more modern uh, methods pass. In general, it is a cat and mouse chasing game, with better PRNGs also suggested by better statistical tests, and the other way around. Among the most popular statistical tests are the following: normality, compressibility linear complexity, autocorrelation, Fourier co coefficients, run and gap tests, partitioning the set of m-bit strings and counting hits in subsets, serial tests, rank of binary matrices, longest run of ones, Hamming weights, random walks, close pairs, and many others. Some of them are very suggestive and some others are more obscure, but they are all statistical tests. All of them can also be used to test PRNGs and thus making them better. Popular statistical batteries can run up to 40 tests or more. When failing one of those tests, a piece of data is found to have an atypical characteristic defined by what that test evaluates, such, an, such as an overrepresentation of certain symbols, to mention just one. A good pseudo random uh, Sequence can pass any finite set of tests, but a truly random sequence would pass all known and future tests. That's the main difference. In the next lecture, we will see what mathematical true randomness really is, as opposed to pseudo-randomness.